Okay, folks. Um, so this is going to be sort of part two of our balancing today. Um, today we're going to learn how to predict the products of a chemical reaction. So this is kind of what we've been building up to for a while. Um, <clears throat> we're going to use what we've learned about single replacement reactions, double replacement reactions, and combustion reactions to predict the products of those reactions. So let's jump into it. So remember that in a single placement reaction, one reactant is an element, the other reactant is a compound, and if the element is a metal, it will replace the metal in the compound. So that's what's going to happen in this first reaction here. We've got copper sulfate, that's a compound. We've got zinc, that's an element. Since zinc is a metal, it's going to replace the copper metal in the compound. So those two are going to trade places. So then our products are going to be zinc sulfate and copper. We need to check the charges on zinc sulfate to make sure that this chemical formula is balanced. And it is because zinc has a plus two charge and sulfate has a minus two charge. Now, how would you know that zinc has a plus two charge? Well, you probably wouldn't at this point. That would be one that I would have to tell you the charge. And so for ones where you need to know the charge, I will tell you what the charges are. And then sulfate, remember you looked that up in your polyatomic ion list. So let, let me just show you that real quick. Polyatomic ions, and then we'll go to images. And where is that list that I gave you? This one right here. So then if you look sulfate, it's SO4 minus two. So that means that it has a minus two charge. Okay, let's keep going. And so next we need to make sure that the number of atoms is balanced. So we need to count the number of copper, sulfates, and zincs on each side. Look on this side, we have one copper, one sulfate, one zinc. Look on this side, we have one copper, one sulfate, and one zinc. So this one's already balanced. So I just got rid of the spots for the coefficients out front. That's how I would write that chemical formula. All right, let's go on to number two. So same thing in a single replacement reaction. One reactant is an element. One reactant is a compound. If the element is a non-metal, it will replace the non-metal in the compound. So here, fluorine is an element. Aluminum bromide is a compound. Fluorine, since that's a non-metal element, is going to replace the non-metal bromine in that compound. So those two are going to trade places. So then we're going to have ALF and BR. <clears throat> Aluminum has a charge of plus 3. Remember, you can get that from the periodic table. I'm going to put that right here. And so aluminum has a charge of plus 3 because if you count backwards, one, two, three, you end up at neon. So aluminum will lose three electrons. That means it form a plus three ion. Fluorine, on the other hand, it will gain one electron. And that way, uh, it'll have the same electron configuration as neon. And so when you gain an electron, you have a negative charge. So aluminum forms a plus three ion. Uh, fluorine forms a negative one ion. And so then what that should tell you is that we need three fluorine atoms to balance the charge. Now, over here I wrote bromine, but I wrote it as bromine 2. And so that's because the halogens, so iodine, bromine, chlorine, fluorine, they're what are known as diatomic elements, which means that you'll never find one by themselves. Um, they always pair up in twos. And so we kind of saw the same thing on the other side of the equation. Um, fluorine is also a uh, diatomic. Um, so fluorine and bromine, diatomic elements. Um, same thing with iodine and chlorine, also oxygen, also nitrogen, and hydrogen. Those are your diatomic elements. There's a couple of different ways people remember that. I always remembered there's a trick kind of seven plus one. This makes a seven right here, that shape. Is a seven and then 
one more right here. Seven plus one. Um, okay. And so then let's keep going. So now we've got our products predicted, aluminum fluoride and bromine. And now we need to balance. So <clears throat> we've got aluminum, fluorine, and bromine on each side of the equation. I count one aluminum, three bromine, and two fluorine. And on this side, I count one aluminum, two bromine, and three fluorine. Okay, and so then we need to balance this out. So in order to do that, <clears throat> Um, we're going to start with aluminums. Well, same number of aluminums on each side. So next we're going to go to bromines. We have three bromines on this side, two bromines on this side. Well, that's going to be kind of a weird one to balance, right? Because there's no whole number that I can multiply two by to get to three. So what we're actually going to do is we're going to, we're going to, um, multiply both coefficients, uh, by something on each side. That way, um, the bromines will end up the same. So, if I look here, I have three bromine, so I'm going to multiply that one by two. If I look here, I've got two bromine, I'm going to multiply that by three. And so that way, on both sides, we now have six bromine. But we also, that um, um, disrupts the number of aluminum, right? Because those were the same, but now they're different. So now I'm going to go back and do aluminum. We've got two aluminum here and one aluminum here. So we need to balance that out. So we're going to add a two right here. And so then now we have two aluminum on this side and now we have six fluorine on this side because two times three gets us to six. <clears throat> so we have two fluorine on this side and we'll balance that out by putting a three right here. And so then now we have six fluorine on this side and now everything should be balanced. Two aluminum, six bromine, six fluorine. Okay, next example is a double replacement reaction. Remember in double replacement reactions, the products and reactants are all ionic compounds. The nonmetal from one reactant will replace the nonmetal from the other reactant. You could also do it with the metal if you wanted to. You could say the metal from one reactant will replace the metal from the other reactant. I like dealing with the nonmetals. I just think it um, it's easier to think about in that way. Um, okay. So, but the nonmetals are going to replace each other. So that means that nitrate and iodine are going to trade places. And so they will. So we'll end up with PBI and KNO3. With PBI, though, we first need to think about the charges. Um, PB has a charge of plus two. Again, this is not one that you should know. I will give you for transition metals like that. I will give you the charge. Uh, if you need to know it. And iodine has a charge of minus one that we get from the periodic table. Here's iodine right here. It, if it gains one electron, it will have a full valence orbital, right? Because it'll have the same electron configuration as xenon. Okay. So, in order to balance out the charge of this formula, we're going to need two iodine atoms. All right, so then now let's think about potassium nitrate. We need to balance that out as well. Um, well, potassium has a plus one charge. That comes from the periodic table. Potassium is right here. If it loses one electron, it has the same electron configuration as argon, so it'll have an empty valent shell. Um, <clears throat> Nitrate, on the other hand, um, um, has a minus one charge, and we get that from the polyatomic ion list. So here's nitrate on the polyatomic ion list, and we should see that it has a charge of uh, negative one. Okay, so then let's keep moving. Now we need to balance the formula. And so for reactants we see we have lead nitrate potassium and iodide and the same thing on the product side how many lead do we have looks like one two nitrates <clears throat> one potassium one iodide same thing on the product side we have one lead we have one nitrate we have one potassium 
and then we have two iodides. Sort that out. Okay, so our lead looks good. Next up is nitrate. I have two nitrate on this side, and I have one on this side. So I'm going to fix that by adding a two right here. And so then now I'll have two nitrate on this side and two potassium. So next I'm going to try to balance potassiums. Got two potassium on this side. So I'm going to add a two right here. And then now I have two potassium and two iodide on each side. So one lead on each side, two potassium on each side, two nitrate on each side, and two iodides on each side. So then I'm just going to get rid of the coefficients in front of lead nitrate and lead iodide. Okay, so last up is combustion reactions. Remember from before that in a combustion reaction, one of the reactants is always oxygen. The other reactant is known as a fuel. And combustion reactions always require heat, which is provided by the lighter, or at least it was in the video that we watched on Monday. When the fuel is a hydrocarbon, the products are always carbon dioxide and water. Well, what's a hydrocarbon? A hydrocarbon is just a molecule with carbon and hydrogen. So here our hydrocarbon is CH4 or methane. Whenever we're burning hydrocarbons, our products are always going to be carbon dioxide, so CO2, and water, H2O. Okay, and so then let's count number of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen on each side. Looks like there should be one hydrogen, sorry, one carbon, <clears throat> four hydrogen, and two oxygen on the reactant side. So one carbon, four hydrogen, two oxygen. On the product side, we see that there's one carbon, we see that there's two hydrogen, we see that there's three oxygen. So the three comes from the two here and the one here. Okay, so let's balance things out. Carbons are already balanced. Let's move on to hydrogen. We have four hydrogen on this side. We have two hydrogen on this side. So we're gonna add a two for a coefficient here. That's gonna change our number of hydrogen to four and our number of oxygen is always four. It's also four, I mean. <clears throat> so two oxygen here and two oxygen from the waters. Okay. And so now we need to balance out oxygen because we have four on this side and two on this side. So we're going to add a two out front and then the number of oxygens becomes four. And now this one's balanced so we can get rid of the coefficients. And that's how I would write that chemical equation. Okay, and so then for your assignment, what you're going to do is take a look at the following reactions. You're going to predict the products and then you're going to balance the reactions. If you have any questions, let me know. And also, just one quick note for the last one, you will need to know the charges of, well, you won't need to know the charge of silver, but you will need to know that the charge of zinc is plus two. Um, so you're going to use that when you're balancing the reaction.